Happy holidays, everyone. In the last class before the break, we didn't quite manage to finish our coverage of the tent math in chapter 13. So the intention of this video is to essentially give you a guide on reading the chapter. Now before we start, make sure you watch the previous video in the set where I make a remark about the sufficiency of a transition subgraph with a form that you see here as a sufficient condition for a horseshoe. Firstly, remember that the tent map is this map that resembles a logistic map. It depends on the parameter mu, so when mu is equal to 2, we call this the full height tent map. The nice thing about the full height tent map is that all the points in 0, 1 are part of the invariant set, so the map always sends points in the interval to itself. Moreover, during the lecture, we discussed the notion of interpreting the full height tent map as a stretch and fold, which are in essence the two elements of chaos. If you assign i0 to the left interval and i1 to the right, then you can verify that j from 0 to 1 contains a horseshoe. So here, f of i0 is equal to j and f of i1 is equal to j. This is extended to the case that mu is greater than 2. So when mu is greater than or equal to 2, it's easy to see and show that the tent map is chaotic. Now, the question that we're confronted with is whether the map is chaotic for mu less than 2. And in fact, the type notes for this course go through a fairly long and convoluted proof that the map is chaotic for mu between root 2 and 2. Before I go further, I do want to say that I struggled for a while making this video because the proof that you have in the type notes is so long and convoluted, and the truth is that there is a much simpler proof that uses the result I showed in the last video regarding period 3 implies chaos. So instead of following the type notes, I'm going to go through this much shorter proof. I'll then come back to the type notes and say a few words about what you might still want to read and understand via that route. This proof is found in Paul Glendening's book and is going to make use of our proof that period 3 implies chaos. Let's first review what is it exactly that you want to do. You want to show that if mu is between root 2 and 2, then the map is chaotic. So you need to find the existence of a horseshoe in f to the n for some n. Step 1. We can verify that there's always a fixed point z in 1 half to f of 1 half. And in fact, this fixed point is at z equal to mu over mu plus 1. Step 2. We can verify that there's a pre-image to the fixed point y in 0 to 1 half, such that f of y is equal to z. Go and compute this, and you should find that y is equal to 1 over 1 plus mu. Step 3. By construction, notice that f squared of z is equal to z, and f squared of y is equal to z. Step 4. Notice that f of 1 half is equal to mu over 2, so f squared of a half is equal to mu times 1 minus mu over 2 by the map, which is equal to mu over 2 times 2 minus mu. This point is less than y if mu squared is greater than 2 or mu is greater than root 2. Step 5. In other words, provided that mu is between root 2 and 2, we have the following inequalities. f squared of a half is less than y, which is less than a half, which is less than z, which is less than f of a half. Moreover, z is sent to itself, and y is sent to z. This is identical to the list of inequalities that we had set up in our period 3 implies chaos. So the rest of that proof follows, and f squared has a horseshoe, and f is chaotic. So with that out of the way, what can we say about the long and convoluted proofs that you see in the typeset notes? The proof in the notes is useful and insightful because it demonstrates more clearly that if you were to look at the f-squared map, you would begin to see these what I call mini-tents that are full height or higher. The point, for example, of this image, which is at mu is equal to 1.5, 
is that the f squared map is shown dashed. If you study the dynamics of this carefully, you'll notice that, that there are two smaller square boxes which form two invariant sets. Look at the left box, for instance. You're sure of the existence of two intervals, say i0 and i1, which then form the horseshoe structure. So the proof is more visual and shows exactly how and where those additional horseshoes arise. In the context of this course, though, I'll say that you should understand what was presented in this video, and you should also understand the steps in the typeset notes that were used to construct the f-squared map, for this is used in the problem set questions. I would expect for you all to be able to do problem set questions from chapters 10, 12, questions 1 to 3, but it's likely that the very end of question 4 will be difficult. Good luck!